Courtney, how is Neil doing? I haven't been by for my uh, daily visit yet. Well, every day there's improvement. I've actually considered sneaking out one of these nights and going to see a movie. That's a great idea. You should do something good for yourself. Maybe I will. How would you like to catch a movie with me Friday? Well, I can't, actually. That's the nurse's ball. Oh, right. I saw the <laughs> posters. Are you going? I'll be performing. <laughs> wow, I think it'll be great. I wish I could see you. Well, why don't you come? It's going to be so much fun. Oh, I'd love to, but I don't have anything to wear. A formal is not one of the things you pack when you're taking your child to the hospital. I'm going to lend you a dress. No, okay? no. Yes. Dan, I can't. Nope. Not another one. Let me first say that I know the policy against any romantic involvement between supervisors and subordinates is in place for good reason. It's there to prevent anyone in authority from taking advantage of someone who reports to them. I have never taken advantage of my position with regards to Dr. Harmon. How do we know that? Alan, please, will you let Dr. Burgess continue? I did not become involved with Dr. Harmon until I accepted a position in San Diego and left General Hospital. Due to my mother's failing health, I returned to Port Charles, and it was then that we resumed a relationship. Well, then, after you returned to your old position here, you were then again his supervisor, were you not? Yes, but because it was only a matter of a few weeks until Dr. Harmon would no longer be under my supervision, I felt confident that I could remain objective toward him. Well, if it was only a matter of a few weeks, why didn't you just stop seeing each other? In retrospect, I can see that is exactly what you should have done. Or you could have asked to return in a different capacity to the hospital. I would have been happy to continue as head of intern for those few weeks. I felt asking to be reassigned because of a romantic involvement would turn a private issue into a public matter. Well, your bad judgment certainly turned it into a public matter. You not only damaged your own reputation, you did so to another doctor's as well. I am very aware of that, believe me. You're also aware that in today's litigious society, any time there is the slightest appearance of impropriety, this hospital is open for the threat of a lawsuit. The irony is that it's because of my strong feelings for General Hospital that I jumped to the chance to return without fully weighing the possible consequences, and I deeply regret it. I would, however, like to assure you that I have never let any personal relationship interfere with my work. My patients have always been my priority, and they have received the best care I am capable of offering. Have we finished here? I've got a lot of work to do. Um, Alan, before you run off, may I speak as Dr. Burgess' advisor? Certainly, Scott. Every organization has to have objective standards, but you cannot legislate emotions. Under the right circumstances, I'm sure that everyone in this room would break a rule to preserve a personal relationship. And I bet a buck everyone in this room has. Dr. Burgess is a loyal employee, highly ethical, a brilliant doctor. Now take that into consideration before you decide what action to take. Hey, Scott, did you hear anything yet? Oh, no. Yeah, I can't believe the board can't come up with something more constructive to do than nose around in people's personal lives. Well, the rules for ethical conduct are in place for a reason. Even the president of the United States has to deal with this kind of thing. You know, listening to you lecture us about ethics is laughable, Chris. No, wait a minute. Don't get me wrong, man. I think the board's being way too hard-nosed on this thing. It's ridiculous what they're doing to Burgess. Oh, yeah, Chris? Well, I bet you're all broken up about it. Gail, I have kept a journal for over a year. So I would know if I had any blackouts because of gaps in the timeline. I think that's a very good idea, but you know, from everything you've told me, Kevin, I don't think you have had blackouts. That's reassuring. Do you remember a long time ago, I was talking about you doing some hypnosis? Well, I think now, right now, would be a very good time to try and recall some of those lost memories. It's probably the only way I'll know the truth about what happened at that picnic. Good boy. Lie down. Okay, comfortable? Yeah. All right. Relax. Close your eyes. Okay, just want you to concentrate on your breathing. Very 
deep, slow, nice breathing. Think of some warm sensations starting at your feet, moving up into your legs, stopping at your knees, and breathe. Slowly breathe. taken into account the fact that you are an excellent physician and that your breach of policy was only for a short time with somewhat extenuating circumstances, but the board is unanimous in its opinion that this incident cannot be taken lightly. Therefore, we have decided that you may remain here at General Hospital with a written reprimand in your file, and the board has also decided that that you should be removed from your position as chief resident. I want to thank the board for its consideration and advise you that I will abide by the decision. I have one request, however. Yes? The responsibility of this breach lies entirely with me, Dr. Harmon's superior. He does not deserve to have this incident negatively impact his career. It would be unfair if his chances of the Quartermain residency are jeopardized because of my error in judgment. Your request is duly noted. And I think our business is done here. Chief resident. I'm sorry, Ellen. It was a just decision, and I won't have any trouble living with it. I'm glad this is over. Well, there is an upside. What? We don't have to hide anymore. May I have the pleasure of your company at the nurse's ball? Politically, it would be a very unwise move. It would be like thumbing my nose at the board, and I... I wouldn't be comfortable doing that. Hey, Dr. Joe. Hey, you two. I knew I'd find you here. Well, I had to check out my pal's cool new T-shirt that his favorite doctor gave him. It's been my favorite Dr. Joe. You're my favorite doctor. Karen. Oh, man, I think I see the future makings of a politician here. <laughs> I wish I could go to the nurse's ball with you guys Friday and see Dr. Karen and Serena perform. Oh, I wish you could go too, buddy. I'll just have to hear all about it from my mom. Uh, your mom's going? Whoa, Mom, you look awesome. <laughs> that dress Dr. Karen loaned you rocks. Karen, I, I don't know how to thank you. Well, it looks like we're all going to the nurse's ball. Just got off the phone with Garcia. They got the lab reports back on the bracelet. And? It's blood on the bracelet. <sighs> Kevin, Kevin, it's all right. Kevin, you're, you're safe. You're right here in your own home, and you're safe. You're safe. Okay? Tell me. Can you tell me what you saw? Yes. What? What did you see? I saw me. I saw myself. Ryan was right. I am just like him, Gail. I killed that woman. I killed that woman on Jasmine Island. I am a murderer. 